Would you like to see some impressions or characters? Oh, God, Lauren, please, ouch. Um, yes, how about uh, Robin Leach? This is Dennis's favorite. Yeah, Carvey, great scooter. Yeah, do the Robin Leach thing, babe. That'll be real good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm Robin Leach, lifestyles of the rich and famous. Oil billionaire, McGeeg, McGoo, Gagee, Gagoogie. He's worth a quarter of a billion dollars. He has 12,000 homes. You have nothing. That's why you're watching this stupid show. Okay, that's Robin Leach. Um, Jimmy Stewart from Weir Window. Ah, uh, no. No, what, what kind of person ju just chops somebody up? I mean, what, what kind of mind would do that? I mean, ju just where would you start? Would you start at the head, or would you work your way down to the feet? Or where, where, where would you start with, with something like that? I mean, what the hell would you do? Yeah. Um, this one. Uh, Penny Hartford was the character I used to do. And then Spinal Tap came out, and it sort of ruined it, but he said, guy, he talks like this. And he said, he basically grew up in Yorkshire, about eight miles east of London. And he had a very bad childhood because um, when he was about nine, my dad left me and my mom. And he woke up one day and he went to the door and he turned to my mom and he said, I don't like you no more, you rotty slut, I'm splitting. And he split it just like that. And it was absolutely bloody amazing. And um, it was very rough on all of us. Okay. That's one. <laughs> these are not things I planned, Lauren, but. But I, I, I figure you must want to see these. Um, <laughs> after your comments about the Rico and uh, <laughs> routine, I took a stab and said, perhaps one would like to see some different characters. Um, well, my brother Brad um, is an electronic genius who, uh, he was a very amazing kid. He always fixed the dryer, and we were always amazed by it. You know, even when, as a child, we'd say, Brad, you fixed the dryer in two minutes with a butter knife. You're only four years old, man. That is amazing. And Brad was a very shy, funny little guy. He'd say something like, yeah, I fixed the dryer. It'll never break down again. And then my parents would say, hey, what did you do to deserve dessert, young man? You know, rhetorical questions like that. And Brad could say, I developed a cheap nuclear fuel rocket system. You want some ice cream on that pie? <laughs> and, uh, well, I guess, um, shall I do the dancing routine? I don't want to take too much time. Go right, uh, go right ahead. Um, oh, don't be afraid. Oh, look. Oh, a diaphragm for an elephant. Oh, don't be afraid. Oh, look, Mr. Happy. Oh, oh, I can't fight with that. Oh, look. Oh, oh, big penis. Oh, oh. Well, actually, I was doing... <laughs> I was doing Robin like senile, like age 70. I'm doing punchlines that make no sense whatsoever. Oh, look. Oh, oh. Oh, oh look. Oh, oh. Oh, don't be afraid. Oh, oh, Mr. Happy. Oh, oh. Robin really enjoys when I do this. Uh, yeah, Carvey, it was good when you did the Williams kid. That was great, Scooter. Yeah, yeah, make fun of a legend on tape. Way to go. All right, Ben. Um, uh, let's see, what else? Um, <laughs> you're my favorite impression now, Ben. I do, um, John, this is an old one. I did John Tavolta. Um, yeah, here's a joke. I, I'm not too good at stand-up comedy, but here it is. Okay. Um, two guys are walking into a bar, okay, like one guy's walking in there, there he is, you can see his little feet, he's there walking, okay, and there's a guy, there's his little mouth, he's like talking, okay, and then there's another guy in the bar there, walking like that, you can see his little mouth talking, you know, and now they're like just talking there, okay, now here's the good part, this guy says, this guy says, what are you drinking, you know, he says, I don't know, and then this guy says, hey, look at that lady over there, and this guy, Wait a minute, this guy says, hey, that's not your lady, that, that's my wife, you know. I did better before at home, you know, I really screwed it up here. <laughs>
Organa Major has been destroyed? It's left of it's completely contaminated. Look at those radiation readouts that's up there. It's impossible. I've never seen anything like it. What's going on? The Empire must have gotten here first. The planet's totally blown away. It would have taken a... It would, it would have taken a thousand ships with more firepower than I've ever seen to do that. If the Empire had a new weapon that was capable of doing that, I'd, I'd have heard about it. I'd know something. Well, now you know. The enemy's on the move. We haven't much time. Well, I brought you here. Now what? We have to find the rebels. What we're carrying belongs to them. The bases are very well hidden. All the power of the Empire can't find them. Do you know where they are? No, not anymore. Yeah, no, no. Well, I'm not taking you on an impossible search across the galaxy. I was hired to bring you here. Now you're here. Give me my other 5,000. You're on your own. I'll let you off in the nearest system. You can't. Look, we've come this far. We must find them. Why? Well, for one reason. You don't have your other 5,000. Well, who's going to pay me? I think there's some things we should talk about. I'm beginning not to like you. Well, how much... Uh... How much do you think she's talking about? A million, at least. If this robot has information related to the destruction of Organa Major, you'll be able to name the reward. Maybe I won't, huh? This begins to interest me. Uh, Hans, maybe... Maybe you should just drop us off. I'm sure we'll be able to find someone willing to take the risk. Oh, all right, all right. You got yourself a ship. But, where do we go from here? I mean, they've taken her to find the hidden bases. How are we going to get to the rebels before she breaks? The Empire already beat us here. She's part of the royal family. They won't get any information from her. She knows the art of mind control. Still, she is our only link between us and the hidden bases. You're saying that we should follow them? I didn't say that, but it appears to be a logical alternative. No, no, that's impossible. They, they're in Alderaan. Nobody, I mean nobody, dares venture near the Alderaan system. Listen, I'm a freebooter, not a revolutionary. You're on the wrong ship, son. Maybe the fact that no one would venture there voluntarily could work to our advantage. They probably don't think anyone would dare try. Don't you believe it? Fear is their greatest defense. I doubt if the actual security there is much greater than on Aquilae or Sullis, and what there is is most likely directed towards a large-scale assault. This is not a game, you know. Well, how many more systems have to get blown away before you have no place to hide or force to fight? Don't you realize what's going on? Kid, you take the glory and the good intentions. I'll take the reward. Fear is their greatest weapon. I'm not afraid of anything. Okay, good. <coughs> Five minutes, Mike.
What's going on now? <laughs> Shit, what are we doing here together? Well, I think I drove Sharon Bananas. I'm officially qualified as a moody, love struck teenager. Are you okay? I, I, I heard you. I'm eight years old, and I'm very excited to sing for you. I'm from a family of three. I have a little brother and a big brother, so I'm in the middle. One of the things I love to do is when my mommy takes me to the senior citizen home, I love to perform for them. My brother plays the piano, and I sing. We put many smiles on their faces. Some of the things I like to do are I love to play Legos, and especially read books. Two of my favorite books are The Serious Benedict Society and Little House on the Prairie. I love to make messes all over the house. My mom sometimes gets mad at me, but I have to clean them up. And I also really love to climb trees. We have a big tree in our backyard that I love to climb, but I can't really get up because I'm by myself. So my daddy has to lift me onto the branch. Today I'm going to sing for you Notice Me Horton from The Seasicle, which is my favorite show in the whole entire world. That is true. And I also am going to sing The Best Things in Life Are Free. There are so many kinds of riches And only one of them is gold Now will you miss
Hey guys, what's up? It's Micah Jesse. We are here live at the House of Blues in Los Angeles for the Imagine LA Gala. We're gonna be talking to all the stars, so keep it locked right here on Rumor Fix. But tell me about your outfit tonight. Um, well, it's funny. I was just telling her, like, I just like hopped on uh, Melrose Boulevard and just walked into some boutique, and I was like, oh, look at these black and white pants, and then I just busted them out. So you know what? I hate people like that. They're just so <laughs> gorgeous. They just throw on something. Well, and you know, it's funny. I'm not really that into fashion, and so I just, I was like, all right, it looks nice. It's black and white. It's summertime. Why not? So. All right. Well, cool. So tell me about your filming schedule. You are this on Teen Wolf. Yeah. Yeah, which is really exciting. It's been airing every Monday, so you got to watch. Sorry, I had to plug that a little. But um, we actually just wrapped shooting for season four, and um, we had started. We had been shooting that since February. Really, really crazy, ridiculous hours, like 18-hour days. Um, but it's airing now, and it's getting some really, really good feedback. And um, just got picked up for season five. So um, hopefully, my character will survive, and you'll see me next season. What can you tell us about this season? Well, um, the really exciting thing is next week you're going to see my character get a little involved with uh, Derek, okay. who's um, one of the mains, and he's this really, really sexy werewolf. And uh, yeah, he just saved me. So um, we're going to, yeah, we're going to get to know each other a little better. What do you mean, get to know each other a little better? <laughs> we're, we're just going to get, you know, a little better acquainted. Yeah, and that's all. That's all. PG-13 stuff, okay, of course. Of course, right. Yeah. Um, now, Imagine Ball, what brings you out tonight? Um, well, one, I love Jimmy to death. And um, he was telling me all about it. And I just love the fact that they like to, well, that this whole program is just about transitioning homeless people into just being, like, normal, everyday working people. Um, I feel like people who are homeless, they, they don't really have those opportunities because they don't, they don't have the resources. So right. I just love the fact that this program is actually trying to help them to transition. So I mean, right. of course, I had to come out here. So right. now, is it true? Was I? I feel like I heard. Are you friends with Nina Dob Dobrev? No. 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 Okay. But that would be kind of awesome, though. <laughs> that would be great. I mean, I have actually like auditioned for Vampire Diaries like several times. I came this close to getting a role, but I did not. Okay. Now, tell me about your acting trajectory. I mean, what what were you doing before Teen Wolf? Um, before Teen Wolf, I was actually on a show called Jane by Design, which is on ABC Family. We got canceled, um, but I played like the mean crazy bully and um, yeah not a whole lot of the fans liked me um, then after that I actually hopped onto a show called Necessary Roughness where I played um, like this crazy track star and I had to get all emotional and cry it was crazy um, but I love what I'm doing now because I get to be like this like badass like motorcycle chick with like a shotgun and it's great did you always know you wanted to be an actress oh, from yeah. Yeah. absolutely like I the actor bug I think hit me when I was like seven because I just remember watching um, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman who were married at the time and I was just like you know what I gotta do this like it's fun like who doesn't want to tell stories on TV and get paid for it so you got quite the personality <laughs> oh thanks thanks I mean I, I gotta you know put the energy somewhere yeah. so Good. Yay. Well, put it out there in the show for tonight. Magic's performing. Yeah. Get on it. What? There. All right. Why you gotta be so rude, right? You know that song's everywhere. Yeah, well, well, you gotta sing it because like, I can't sing. I nothing. can't sing. I'll let them do it. <laughs> I'd be too out of tune. Is there any rumors before we go that you want to set the record straight on? Oh goodness. Um, probably just the rumor that I'm like this like mean chick on the show, and I'm not really mean. I'm a nice person. Okay. Blow your fans a kiss. Mwah. Love you all. <laughs>